Hi, everyone. I'm Dan Albers, and welcome to This Week in Anderson on Dingo and the Coach on USBN Sports. And as always, I'm joined with my co-host here, Steve Ellis. And Steve, I'll tell you what, uh, very excited to have our next guest, Z Carell. You know, we, we've we obviously uh, had a great career at Anderson and, and love watching and following up with him at Notre Dame. And he's not only grown as a, you know, just a, a great football player, but just an overall great guy. And I, I'm so super excited to have Zeke join us here today. Well, no surprise as, at his success, but you know, just his last name is a legendary family in Anderson Township, as everyone knows. So I can't wait to get into it and ask about his playing days and talk about his family. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be great. So as we said, joining us is uh, Zeke Carell. And Zeke, we really appreciate you. I know you're super busy with spring ball and everything coming up, but taking the time here this morning to join us, we really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. No problem. Happy to be on. <laughs> well, let, let, let's go back and talk about the days of, of growing up in Anderson, uh, you know, talking about you know, where you grew up, what, like what side of Anderson and what life was like for you growing up uh, in Anderson Township? Yeah, so I grew up about two minute, two minute drive away from Anderson, Asbury Hills. Um, yeah. You know, every single one of my siblings went there. I'm the youngest of nine for those of you that are listening that don't know. Um, basically, every teacher at Anderson said, I knew you when you were born, which <laughs> I was like, I don't even know this person. And somehow they knew me when I was a baby. But yeah. Uh, that's kind of what comes with the territory when you have eight older siblings. But, uh, yeah, went to Air Elementary, then went to Nagel Middle School, and, yeah, went to Anderson. And, uh, you know, growing up in Anderson Township was a lot of fun. Uh, I felt like everyone said they at least knew one of my siblings or someone <laughs> related. To me. And so at least I got my foot in the door pretty easy, but most people didn't have to, you know, work too hard to earn their trust. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, that, that's great. <laughs> See, Danny, not a some of the states guy. Yeah, we, we so, so Zeke, we went on a roll here. We had <laughs> uh, Steve thought I did it on purpose that we had a lot yes. of guys, and I, I purposely just got some of the states people. So Steve's finally happy. That's why he was clapping because he finally got someone on his side of uh, yeah, uh, Anderson Township. That's right. <laughs> That's right. But see, Zeke, when I went there, it was we were the air apples. Yeah. I was, I was the air apples until I think about fourth grade, we changed the Falcons, and then that's when. <laughs> Like all oh, that's stupid. I don't know why you're <laughs> the apple is far more fierce than the Falcons. So yeah. <laughs> so Zig, let's talk a little bit about when when you were growing up in Brittany Acres there, um, and you know maybe some of the neighbors you had, you know, going out to play and what sports you might have played when you were when you were younger. Yeah. So when I was younger, I played uh, football, basketball, and baseball. Definitely wasn't the best baseball player. I was no Bryce Harper. Uh, <laughs> I, I played up a year as well on a pretty good team, and I did not want to play anymore because that was not my sport. <laughs> I went for the fences and half the time feel a gust of wind after. So, uh, yeah, I, I stopped playing baseball after about fifth grade, and then I really love basketball. I still love it. Um, I played basketball up through freshman year of high school, and I played AAU from sixth grade through freshman year. Uh, that was a lot of fun, but then I had to stop playing just because I wanted to focus on football because I had, you know, I don't think there's many six, three centers in the NBA. Uh, <laughs> and I had to gain weight, and I couldn't really do that with the amount of basketball that I was playing, running around and stuff. And I want to be an offensive lineman because uh, you don't have to be super athletic. So that's <laughs> the part of that. So I ended up focused up on uh, football after my freshman year and then started taking it super serious from there. Um, you know, we got the Stone brothers uh, who live pretty close by, a couple other, Nick Tur a couple other offensive linemen um, that really, like, shared that passion for offensive line play that I did in high school, which was a lot of fun to be around. And, you know, they're a two-minute drive away as well, so it's really easy to go, you know, hang out and spend some time with those guys. So, on the football part, uh, who did you play for in the youth? Was it Wildcats or who'd you play for? Play for the Anderson Wildcats, yeah. Okay. Who was your coach? Uh Mank Chatfield. Chatfield. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So I want to get into the uh to the, the legendary all-star basketball team you played on with some uh great names of uh Brandy and and uh Albers and Wool Price and Lackmeyer. <laughs> So, so tell me about this team that that uh, was hand picked, as they say, and what a great run you guys had. Yeah, I think we were pretty much bred for that team. Uh, <laughs> I was, I was definitely still the center. 
we we were actually really good. Uh, Jacob Lackmeyer was pretty much the facilitator, and then uh, Ryan Albers is a pretty good shooter back in the day. He also has uh, good at driving into the paint a little bit. You know, you could get in there a little bit, but um, my specialty was definitely just the drop step and bank shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that that team was a lot of fun. We played together for. I want to say like four or five years, kind of just sometimes you drop a guy or pick someone else up, but yeah, yeah, that team stuck around. And then some of those guys ended up playing on my AU team uh, through middle school and stuff. What well, didn't, yeah. uh, wasn't Michael, Michael Brandy on that team too? Yeah. Yeah. Michael was on my, my uh, elementary team and then he played AU with me as well. So well who coached that team? Um, the elementary team, I want to say. Was that Philson Kovic? Or was it I Frank? Think, I think uh, Frank was one of the assistant coaches. I think Jacob Lackmeyer's dad. Okay. Uh, oh, Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. Charlie. Yeah, I think Charlie was the head coach. And then that's right. My AU team it was uh, Frank Brandy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that must have been a lot of fun with those guys because all those. I mean, most of those guys, or some of those guys, went to school with you. I know Ryan went to yeah, you know, West Claremont and some of those other guys, but. Uh, I mean, I, I heard about this team for years, you know, coming up. <laughs> <laughs> so that must have been a lot of fun. All right. So let's go into high school. Well, let's, I'll tell you what, let's go back to Nagel. So you go to Nagel and do you play uh, football and, and uh, basketball for Nagel? Yeah, I play football and basketball in Nagel. Um, I was on the silver team in seventh grade for my basketball. And also for football, too. And then in eighth grade, I was on blue, uh, I think, for both. Okay. So, yeah, Nagel, I had a couple of good coaches there. I had a lot of fun. That's that's kind of when I hit my growth spurt, too. So, I felt like I was – Oh, yeah. Yeah. I felt like I was a little more athletic. Like, I think in, in eighth grade, I was probably 6'2". So, I've only, like, grown an inch oh, since wow. eighth grade. So I was <laughs> a lot taller than everyone else. And, Danny, uh, go on with the next question. I got to do something with the dog. All uh, right. <laughs> yeah. I, I hit my growth spurt then, so I felt like, oh, man, I'm going to be like 6'6", six, six, so I'm going to be big, big, huge guy, and I end up only growing another inch. So that's kind of, that's <laughs> yeah, kind that, of, yeah, was, you're going to be taller than your brother, so that was what I was looking forward to, and then uh, didn't end up happening that way. You, but You know, I can't, I can't remember what your brothers, I can't remember how big they were, how tall they were. I can't remember. I know, uh, was it your brother Gabe that played tight end, I believe? How tall did yeah. he? How tall was he? Was he taller than Gabe, you? Five, yeah, he's a little taller than I am. Is he? Yeah. Gabe's yeah. Five, he played tight end at Kentucky, and then all my other brothers are are uh, Jesse's like six two. Josh is probably like six one and a half. He tell you six two, uh, <laughs> and then Caleb's probably like five ten. Yeah. So, so l- l- let's talk about that. Let's so you back in your high school days. You know, talk about like I just said about your brothers. Uh, you basically grew up around football. You had several of your brothers that played. Were they a pretty big influence on on your 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 playing career and helping you out and kind of telling you what things were all about? Uh, big time. And they also, when I was younger, I actually played uh, like fullback, linebacker, D end. I didn't really just stick to the line because I was just way bigger than everyone else at that point, and so yeah. they wanted to pretty much just try and clog up the a gaps, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they they were very big on pushing me to like take it really serious, like act like a professional, try and gain the weight that I needed to to play offensive line because, like, that's your ticket if you really want right. to play uh, high level college football. It'd be uh-huh. offensive line, not like tight end or anything like that, just because you know there's five offensive linemen, there's only one starting tight end, right? Right. right. Yeah. So uh, they they really helped me in taking that serious, and you know, seeing my oldest brother Gabe and two of my other brothers end up playing in college football. Um, that that was really big influence on me, just looking up to them and seeing how they, like, approach their business. And, you know, playing collegiate football is not easy. Right. Uh, especially not at the Division One level. So if, if that was something I was really interested in doing, they, they were, like, willing to uh, make sure I took every sacrifice necessary <laughs> so I could get yeah. there. So, yeah, I'm having them around. Um, just guys to look up to and then also – like they'd keep me in check, make sure I was eating enough to, to gain the weight I needed. <laughs> no, that that always awesome. been, yeah, you also more, I can't even eat anymore at this point. So. Yeah, I bet, yeah, I bet. Yeah, I bet. Um, 
So you also had you also had your grandfather that played at the University of Kentucky. He played for Bear Bryant. Did you ever hear any stories of your grandfather, uh, you know, playing for for Bear Bryant? Yeah. So the funny thing is, he actually played defensive guard. Uh, that just shows you how old it is. Wow. How, how he played, but um, my dad has told me a story of when he first got there. They actually didn't have face masks yet, so they just had the leather straps. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and. Uh, Bear Bear Bryant was asking him if he liked the face mask. He's like, yeah, I think that would probably help, you know, not get punched <laughs> in the face. I've heard about playing that time had uh, pretty swollen noses, so <laughs> not bad. What about what about stories with your dad too? Because your dad didn't your dad play too as well at yeah, Kentucky yeah. and then Gabe too. Talk about both those guys. Yeah. Um. So my dad played defensive end at Kentucky, and my brother, my oldest brother, Gabe played tight end at Kentucky. Um. I'm sure there's a million stories that I could think of, but I'll just say that my dad met my mom there. Yeah. Um, oh. And she was on like a club softball team. And I think the club like soccer team. Um, and they, they went to, to school there and they met. Um, and then my brother obviously went there and my grandpa went there. And that's kind of how like the whole Kentucky legacy thing started for me. Wow. Uh, Eddie, Eddie. I always wanted to go there too, just because, I mean, that's where my whole, that's pretty much where my whole family went. Like I had a sister that went there too, and they were essentially my first offer. So uh, that was big time for me. And then that's kind of when the whole recruiting world kind of opened up to me. So was there any pressure to, to, to feel like you should go? I mean, I don't, I'm sure your dad didn't do that because your dad's not a guy that would do like that. Did you feel the pressure at all? Like, man, I should really try to go here. Did you, was it pretty like a, you know, pretty open process for you? Um, They're definitely number one on my list when I, like before I really even started getting recruited just because I was a huge Kentucky fan growing up, like Kentucky basketball, Kentucky football, anything Kentucky pretty much, uh, especially going to my oldest brother's games when I was younger. I kind of put that pressure on myself. And then when the recruiting door really opened up for me and I started visiting all these other places, I was kind of just like, I think I can figure out what's best for me. Right. Yeah, that, that's good. So, so let's, let's get into the, the, to Anderson here. You played for coach Dreyer, coach Stanyard. Um, and that was kind of when Anderson was starting to get back into that, that playoff run and, and the things going and the playoff experience. So talk a little bit about that transition of Anderson football, going back to getting in the playoffs and then also playing for coach Dreyer and coach Stanyard. Yeah, playing at Anderson was a blast. Um, if there was one thing I'd go back and say, I'd tell Dry to run the ball more. Uh, <laughs> he, yeah, uh, Two-point stance, but we had a really – I'll tell you what, we had a really good team, and we had an offense that could do a lot of damage on some defenses. Um, the style of play, especially – I'll give a huge shout-out to Coach Stanyard. Like, he really helped uh, the guys, like, focus in on their technique and – Especially for high school players, it's really important to just have like a skill set of moves that you need to use and j just master the basics. And he really helped me and the other guys in the offensive line do that. And that's why we were so successful that year, uh, those few years playing Anderson. Um, but yeah, we definitely should have ran the ball a little more drier for listening to this. <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> wait, Zeke, I'll make sure Zeke, I'll make sure to cut this part out when you said that and I'll send it to him. <laughs> You'll send it to him. <laughs> That's pretty good. Hey, hey. Zeke, so, so you were around, you know, obviously when your oldest brother Gabe played and watching Anderson football all the way up and, and you know, the great teams that, that they had, and then there was a little bit of a lull there, and then you were able to bring it back. What do you think the difference was? Um, I'd honestly just say the way that we played was a little – we had a, a much more like pro style uh, offense. So we started, we were able to sling the rock a little bit, which I was saying to, uh, run the ball, but the ball. <laughs> you know, 40 plus points a game on teams, then that definitely helps you win football games. Yeah. Uh, but also our offensive line really improved through those years. We had a bunch of guys that um, I feel like really helped facilitate the game. And we had a lot of talent at receiver and, Jay Volpenheim was my quarterback, uh, sophomore year, junior year. So, yeah, it hey. was yeah, it was all it was a lot of fun. 
I think I got I got one thing though. I, I think you were on that the game that we played Troy at Troy. And that yeah. fourth down call, we that was a first down. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, I, I was down on the field and that was a first down. I don't care what anybody says. I, I, I'm i sure you probably feel the same way. Yeah. We all felt the same way. We're all sick to our stomachs about that one, but uh, yeah. nothing you can do about it. It's a great game. <laughs> one of the best games I remember, man. That was a great game. Yeah. Well, Zeke, you obviously know the history, at least the last 30 years or so of Anderson football. And, and it seems like offensive linemen just, have have excelled beyond belief in Anderson. I mean, when you follow the, the footsteps on the line of of the the Norwells and the Ty Halls and and Mans. Jamie yeah M- Mans and who else? Who am I missing? To Greg Mans, Jamie Mons. I mean, there's there's just well, some... who else played at Kentucky? Oh, when it, was, another... um, it was um, Jeremy Stretch. Uh, Stretch was he offensive line? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, so you go through that process and, and I mean, because that's kind of, if you talk to anybody outside of Anderson, it seems like, you know, offensive line. And, and now that there's a couple other guys that are on the team right now that are already getting recruited and offers for D1 from the mm-hmm. offensive line, which is, which is incredible. So uh, what, I mean, I know Danny talked about the pressure or non-pressure of the UK. What was some of the, the uh, recruiting, how did the recruiting process go for you and how did you end up at Notre Dame? Um, let's see. I started getting offers after my, after my sophomore season, I started doing a lot of camps and stuff. And, uh, there was a UC like camp, but you had to pay for it. Cause it was like a private camp. So it was just guys oh. like, kind of trying to figure out if they want to offer or not. Um, and I went there and actually probably had the best performance ever, like one-on-one stuff like that. Um, and then Cincinnati offered me on the spot. Uh, and that when that was when uh, Luke Fickle was there. Yeah. I think he kind of first started getting there. And then <clears throat> that same night, about like two hours later, Kentucky offered me. I'm like, this doesn't even feel real. I didn't. I didn't know <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, after that, it kind of just like the doors open basically anywhere. Uh, places started offering me Ohio State and then Clemson, Alabama, like those schools uh, started reaching out. And being in Ohio, it's definitely different. If Ohio State offers you and they really want you, they'll they'll try and chase it pretty hard because um, they don't like losing in-state recruits. But when I went to Notre Dame, uh, there's definitely just something different about it, like being in that locker room and talking to the players and stuff. I, I definitely saw it as a place that I felt like I'd fit in the most. And I just wanted to surround myself with like-minded people because you can go to a school for a coach or uh, a promise that they can try and make you. But at the end of the day, coaches can always leave and, you know, they can't guarantee you anything as a recruit or before you even get there to improve yourself. And I knew that if I went to Notre Dame, I'd just be surrounding myself with a bunch of guys that are really passionate about football and like obsessed with getting better. So um, I chose Notre Dame for the people, not, not really the place. And it's, that's awesome. Come on, I'll be right back. Oh my gosh, Steve. Um, <laughs> so so let let's uh, let's get into the uh, the the you know I think I believe that you did you redshirt your first your first year is that correct? Yeah. yeah. How does that how does that process work as far as is that where did were the coach pretty upfront with you in the beginning telling you hey I think we're going to redshirt you or was it you started camp went through camp and 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 you you both kind of like a mutual agreement that you thought that was best for you. Um, yeah, it's kind of something that you talk about right before the season starts and you like as a freshman, you kind of already know uh, where your role is. Uh, but I early enrolled. So I left high school a semester early to get to Notre Dame a semester early. I so I all spring ball uh, and all of camp. So I, I definitely had a good sense of where I was at. Um, yeah, I mean, every single guy on the offensive line is now in the NFL or yeah. about to be. So, yeah, I had some. I had a lot of guys that uh, kind of helped me and, you know, any extra coaching or extra work that I put in, like they'd be a huge source of um, knowledge for me. And I kind of just try to pick the brains because I knew like Notre Dame's O-line you. And if I wanted to go to school to get better off, it's a line to be Notre Dame. Yeah. Yeah. So did, did, did you, when you came in, did, were they 
telling you you're gonna we want you to play center guard did they really say or was it just we, we're gonna put you anywhere on that line was there kind of talk about that when you got recruited yeah uh initially it was kind of like interior offensive line so that's your centers and guards and then uh, my freshman year, I started playing center, and they, they're like, we think you are just a center, a pure center. So that's why I've been playing. Uh, my junior year, I did play uh, some guard, but I think center is probably my natural spot. That's that's great. So let's talk about – you talked about you don't – you go to a place not just for the coach and all that or whatever. So talk about – I know Brian Kelly recruited you, and then a year ago he kind of kind of shocked the, the world a little bit and, and made that decision to, to go to LSU and – and, and coaching change are always hard on players, coaches, university, even fans and stuff. So talk about when you found out and and, and, and how that was for you. I'm sure it was uh, probably a, a surprise for you too as well. Yeah. Uh, I think that was crazy for the entire team because that was right after our last regular season game, Stanford. Um, we're getting ready to go into our bowl game and – we find out from social media. We didn't find out from Coach Kelly. So we find out on Twitter, uh, like, sources, this just in, Brian Kelly's going to LSU, and we're all like, what? Like, what is this even talking about? And then we get a message at, like, 10-something at night, late at night, hey, guys, team meeting, 7 a.m. the next day. Mm -hmm. And we go in, and it's just, like, five minutes. He tells us he's leaving, and then he's out. That's it. That's that's wow. the end of it. So that's the world of college football. Uh I mean, coaches that have, sometimes they have a short window because they have to sign their contract before a certain part of the spring. And it's just like that. They're gone. So uh, it, was, it was a huge shock to all of us. No one saw it coming at all. And we were on a scramble to find a coach before a bowl game. Yeah. So we ended up making Freeman the interim, and then we hired him as the, the head coach the next year, and it's been awesome. Yeah, let, let, let's get into that real quick because, uh, you know, you are playing for Marcus Freeman. I know a lot of people here in Cincinnati absolutely love the guy, um, was just great here at, when he was defense coordinator at UC. And, you know, I think a lot of people thought at one time, if I don't think if UC would have went on that little run, a lot of people were talking to Luke Fickle might go over there. But uh, you're playing for Marcus Freeman and talk, talk a little bit. I mean, I, I love watching all the social media stuff with Marcus Freeman and I, I think I would that would be a guy I would love to play for. Just talk a little bit about Marcus Freeman. Yeah, Coach Freeman is a hundred percent a player's coach. He he's I mean, he's a younger guy. He he's played college football. He played at Ohio State. Like he knows he knows what it's about. Um he's definitely a guy that holds all the players accountable and he pushes us to, you know, practice harder and make ourselves better. Um and just really understand the importance of what we're doing. And but he's also a guy that you can, you know, talk to, chat it up a little bit with, um, you know, someone, someone that you can see after practice and not be like, oh, crap, there's Coach Freeman. It's like, oh, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe he'll chirp you a little bit for a play you <laughs> or something. But, uh, yeah, he's he's great. He's an awesome coach. And uh, he really has put together a really good staff for this season. So I'm looking forward to it. That's awesome. So you mentioned before um, we went on the air here that that uh, you had some practices. How is that going? Are you guys done or or are you still going? Yeah. So in the spring, we have uh, 15 toe practices. Our 15th is our spring game. Uh, yesterday, we just finished our sixth uh, spring practice. So it's going pretty good. When is the spring game? Um, it is April 22nd. Okay. Is that that's probably pretty well attended, isn't it? Yeah, it's our blue gold game. There'll be uh, a couple thousand people, probably like probably like twenty, thirty thousand people there most of the time. I feel like oh so. for a practice. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's incredible. Wow. Yeah, you you know Zeke, I I can tell. I I went to that you know the UC uh, Notre Dame game a couple years ago, and I I can I, I was just amazed. It's just such a beautiful campus, and it was. Probably, like you said, the people there were absolutely incredible. I mean, they treated, you know, even though I was a UC fan, they they didn't treat any of us differently. And it was it, it was one of the coolest experiences that I've ever experienced in my life to be. And I can see why you went to Notre Dame, because that was a really cool. It, it's just such a beautiful campus. Uh, mm -hmm. Great people. And uh, I, I'm sure that's why you probably decided to go there, too, is because of that reason, because it was just, it's just a beautiful place. Yeah, I definitely didn't want to go somewhere where. Uh, you look around and 
all you see are things you don't want to look at every day. Um, <laughs> also, a big part of it is my faith was a huge aspect in me deciding yeah. where to go. Um, and Notre Dame really has a huge emphasis on faith and belief. And, I mean, you look past the end zone, one direction, you see touchdown Jesus. Yeah. Like, hundreds of feet tall, however tall that building is. And then uh, got the golden dome with uh, mother Mary on top, all that. So definitely a lot of, it's very pretty campus. Uh, I kind of feel like you're in Hogwarts. Like you're living in Harry Potter sometimes. <laughs> the winters here are pretty cold. So when like the whole campus will be covered in snow and it just, you just see these like rustic looking buildings. It, it's, yeah. yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. It's a, be it's a beautiful place. Well, the cool thing for us, Zeke, is, is that, you know, like a lot of some other Anderson players that, that are playing in, in, in a position like you are now is that, you know, whenever, at least for me, like whenever I watch Notre Dame games, you know, obviously I follow the score, but all I'm watching is you, yeah. you know, because I'm rooting for you. And, you know, you know, and then it's, you know, I'll call Frank Brandy, you know, that afternoon or whatever and say, do you see Zeke, you know, and, and it's just so cool to root for you and, and you know, and what a great guy you are and, and the quality family you come from. And, and so it's just really cool to, to, you know, be a part of that and, and just to root you on. That's awesome. I really appreciate that. Yeah. So let's get into your family, Zeke. Um, uh, you mentioned a little bit about your mom and dad and your siblings. Um, and you know what influence they had on you, obviously, and the great genes that your parents have passed down. Um, how are your parents? Where are they? Are they still in Brittany Acres? And, yeah. And, and give us an update on your family. Yeah, uh, my sister and her husband just started a church in Milford. Uh, it's called Heart Church. Yeah. So that's that's what they're doing. My my parents are helping out a lot with that uh still living in the same house in Brittany acres and her brother jesse is uh finding his apartment with his fiance they're getting married in two weeks so a lot is a lot is happening at home but um yeah they're still they're still right there okay and so not to not not to get you know in front of anything but you know do you have some ideas on what like a year year from now looks like for you after football this coming season? Hopefully it looked like uh, getting ready for the draft. Um, yes. Awesome. That'd be after pro day and combine and all that. So, uh, yeah, a lot of these guys are pretty much relaxing now, just making sure they're staying in shape because uh, the draft's coming up. And wow. So. That's incredible. That's so cool. And, you know, Zeke, you, you, you mentioned your faith and everything. I just want to mention something about your dad. Your dad – uh um he was a big influence on me i was at a, at a dark point at one time and your dad um i'm getting emotional about it but uh, your dad um called me up one time out of the blue and he got me through it so i think that's a huge part of how you are with that and your dad um just a great guy and i just i'll never forget what your dad did for me yeah it was uh, pretty pretty cool that your dad can do that stuff for people and, and be there for people and be a man of uh, faith and all that. And it, it really, really helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's uh, when it comes to my faith, like he's, he's the person that I look up to the most. Um, he's, I feel like he always has open ears. He's a very good listener. Yep. You know, when it comes to people, he, he cares a lot. Yeah. Well, because We'll go to a gas station, maybe on a road trip to get some snacks. And sometimes he'll be in there 20 minutes talking to someone he's never met before. So, <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I can I can see that. And that's no just, surprise. Yeah, he just I just wanted to let you know that he really got me through a tough time. And and uh, I really appreciate that. And I, I don't know if I've ever really told him that. No but, surprise. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, just a great guy. So but let's get into some. You still keep in touch with uh, some of your got your former teammates and any, anybody at Anderson. You still keep in touch with them? Oh, uh, Yeah. Uh, I talk to the Stones every once in a while. We don't I don't really talk to anyone on like a sit on a consistent basis because we have super busy schedules and stuff. Um, but I talk to Stone Brothers sometimes. I talk to Nick Giano. Yeah. Uh, every once in a while, I'll talk to Dreyer, Stanyard, uh, to see how they're doing. I just saw Coach Stanyard rocking out at the yes, yes. 
<laughs> I saw that. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, but yeah, I mainly just I talked to my O line buddies from the football team in high school. Those are the guys that. Did, 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 you know, did, did during the did season, Michael Brandy come and visit you recently, or come to a game? Yeah, he did. He went to. Uh, I think he came to the Stanford game, so he's definitely not the best one to come to. But yeah, I'll <laughs> we'll get him out also. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Um, so obviously, do you still? I mean, I know you got your games on Saturday, but do you know Friday? I mean, do you kind of follow up with them on Friday, the, the the football team, to see what they did? Uh, I'll I'll look at the scores and see how we're doing. And every once in a while, I'll text uh, Dryer, ask him. You know what's going on there, but <laughs> there'll be sometimes where he'll be like, "Oh, you gotta look at this uh, this kid that we got." Um, like, do you think he, you know, has what it takes to make it to that level? Um, you know, talk to coaches, stuff like that. Uh, so it's it's been awesome being able to keep part of that relationship. And you know, when I go home, we're we're doing like offensive line camp and stuff. So it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's cool. cool. So we're going to go ahead and try to get this really wrapped up quick. But what we try to do is at the end, and I probably should have warned you about this, but we try to do some of your favorite memories. And so let, let's go. Uh, do you have a favorite memory? And we want to do a favorite memory in high school, college, and then maybe your favorite teacher or coach. So let's start off with your favorite high school memory. I would say it was after our uh, playoff win. Dreyer had the Saturdays for the boys flag. And we were playing – what song was it? I think it was – I think it was like Mo Bamba, like one of the rap songs that <laughs> popular at the time. And Dryer's in the middle of the locker room, all the players were around, and he was waving the flag around, and he planted it in the middle of the locker room because I was like right when Baker Mayfield did that at Ohio State. Uh, yes. oh, yeah. That was going nuts. Like it was, it was a lot of fun after a big win. That's cool. And then, yeah, I'd say in college so far, uh, probably this year beating Clemson, honestly. Like we beat the brakes off Clemson this year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we just ran the ball all over them, and we like they had one of the best run defenses and stuff. And that, as an offensive line, was like awesome. Like yep. that's that's a game you look back at with pride. Yep. Uh, also, the South Carolina game, like as a team, the way that we battled that game uh, for four quarters, like didn't let up at all. Even when we were down twenty-one-seven, like the way we battled that game was awesome. I think that's up there for my memories so far playing college football as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. cool. What about you got a favorite coach or player that or a favorite coach or teacher that I mean, because we were I mean, probably some of the teachers there, they're now there, there's none of them that were there when we were there. We're we're ancient Zeke. So is there any uh, <laughs> favorite coaches or uh teachers you have? Yeah, uh Coach Standard just helped me so much with football and Coach Dreyer um would always keep it real. Uh he's a great coach. Like he had runs an awesome offense. Yeah. Uh, and then I think he also like they help guys get ready for to play in college, and then as far as teachers go, I'd say Mrs. Fun is probably my favorite. Okay, uh, her, her computer class, yeah, we design whatever, but she was just such a sweet lady. So yeah. shout out Mrs. Fun. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, Zeke, I, I know you're you're super super busy, and uh, we really really appreciate you taking the time. And you know that all of Anderson Township on, on Saturdays they're they're always uh texting everybody and, and watching and, and, you know, and I always get the updates from, we either hear from Michael Brandy or my, my, my nephew, Ryan. And so it's, it's, it's really cool that you uh, still keep in touch with people at Anderson and, and your family is just, like we said, is just the best family, one of the best families in Anderson much. Township. And we really appreciate you taking the time on this busy schedule. And, you know, even though I'm a big UC fan, I'm gonna have to say go Irish, man. I, I, I you know, that's uh Irish. That's hard, take that. hard, for me, hard for me to say because I'm a big UC fan, but I, I, I it's it's always Notre Dame and, and, and UC as, as far as I'm concerned. And I'm Steve, I'm sure you're the same way. Oh, there's no question. And, and I mean, knowing the Corral family for as long as we have, you know, and it's just uh, incredible to watch. And and you're right, Zeke, a lot of us has, have watched you grow up. And, and you know, because remember, you go into the games when you were, you know, just barely able to walk, but, but just to see how far you've come and, and, and to excel and, and succeed like you have. And, and we hope it only continues because we'd love to see you play on Sundays. Yeah. That's the goal. That's awesome. All right. Well, Zeke, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. We again, appreciate you doing it here. So for Steve Ellis, Dan Albers and Zeke Carell, you've been watching this week in Anderson. We'll catch you next week. <laughs>